This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I rejoice, my family. We rejoice worshiping with you this morning. It's a privilege and an honor to stand behind this pulpit to share God's word. Let me bring a God's word to you without any further introduction. I want to read from Mark chapter 13, very familiar portion. Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 6. Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 6. Then as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Let me read one more scripture. Verse number 13, a few verses down. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. May the Lord add much blessings upon God's word. In this scripture we see that the disciples asking, Master, look at the, how great these buildings are. The temple was a pride for the Jew. And when they look at the temple, they're saying, wow, what a humongous building. What a beautiful building. And that building, I read like this, I hope it is true. Each stone, each brick is almost like 35 feet long. One stone. Unbelievable. I felt a doubt when I read that. 35 feet long, 13 feet high, 18 feet width. If you take a moment to think about it, you can see that. How big those stones. Now imagine how big that building is. A building built by this huge stones. Definitely, it is a pride of Jews. But they brought you three questions. You probably noticed that while I read that. Number one, they are asking, when will be the temple be destroyed? When will this great building, this temple, be destroyed? Number two, what will be the signs? Number three, when will, will be the end? When will be the end? Verse number two, you probably noticed that there's a word called destruction. That building will be dis destroyed. It happens in AD 70, 70 by Romans. It happens. Verse number five says, many will deceive. Deception will happen. Number verse number seven says, a great disaster going to come upon. Disaster. The title of my message is Stay Awake. Stay awake. If you look around, these days we know something is about to happen. For believers, for Christians, we know that something is nothing other than the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen? We know the worldwide persecution has been happening all since the first century. But I just recently found uh, a statistics like this, every day, per day, 24 hour period, about 273 Christians, just like you and me, around the world, about 273 people become martyrs, being killed because of their faith. If you multiply that into one year, 
is almost 99,465 people. If you think about it, that's a huge. 80% of Christians being hated by this world. Everywhere, even in this country, this great blessed country, there are thousands of thousands of Christians being hated in their workplace, in their school, everywhere, our community, our society. If you are a true believer, if you're living for the Lord, if you want to shine in the darkest areas of our lives, you will be hated. I will be hated. What is the purpose of his coming? We all know he's coming. The Sunday morning, we all are Christians. I don't think uh, any non-Christian, non-believers are attending this service. So let me put it this way. We all know Jesus is coming. What is the purpose of his coming? We must know that. The Bible says in chapter 14, in the book of Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 3 says, he is coming, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, Jesus says, and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There's one word, receive. You don't see that one word, receive, in a Malayalam Bible. In Malayalam Bible it says, He come, one of the main purpose of Jesus coming, is to make us to sit with him. Sit with him. The Bible study I heard the uh, pastor was uh, sharing about uh, the grandchildren. I have five. What a joy when our grandchildren comes next to us and sit with us, sit in our lap. What a joy that it is. Jesus is coming to take us, to receive us from this wretched world, this painful world. Even though everything is fine, especially people who live in this country, everything is okay. We don't have much persecution. But at the same time, every Christian, our heartbeat should be, one of this day, our master, our beloved Jesus will come. He will take us. He will receive us. And he wants us to sit with him. I hope we all want to do that looking forward number two he is coming to give us rewards in this world we don't get proper reward even in our workplace maybe in our church the services we do for the lord for the church we may not get the proper rewards it's okay friends <laughs> it's okay jesus is coming to give the right the proper reward. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give it to everyone according to his work. So don't, don't feel, well, I don't get the reward, so I'm not going to do it. Uh -uh. You may not get the reward. But this scripture promising us one of these days, our master will come. He has the reward in his hand. He will not make a mistake. He's not a man. He's God. He's sovereign. He will give us the proper reward. I'm looking forward to that. How we know his coming is at hand. Many, even Christian people. I think there are a few people who ask me, a few students who ask me, is it true he is going to come? Tell me the truth. I've been hearing all my life, Jesus is coming, he is coming, he is coming. In every convention, at the last day we hear the message of the Lord's coming. Where is he? Is it true he is coming? Maybe some of you answers may have that question, I don't know. It's possible. But look at these verses, I want to read two, three verses. Yes, he will come. He is coming, he is imminent. He is coming at any time, any moment. First scripture I want to read is 2 Peter chapter 3, verses number 3 and 4. It says, Scoffers will come. In the last two days, these are the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise 
of his coming. Those kind of people, the Bible says, they are scoffers. They are teasing the Christians. Ha ha, you are preaching all this time. Jesus is coming. What is he? He's not here. They are the scoffers, I hope and I pray. None of us will be in that group. We know he's coming. Amen? He will come. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 onwards. It's a lengthy passage. Can I read it? Uh, quickly, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. In the last two days, last two days, perilous times, terrible time will come. It's already here. Amen. Last two, four years I'm in India. Amen. I travel in many places in India. I see things are happening. I'm sure you heard the news. Terrible things are happening. Terrible things. Nowhere is safe. Our little children going to the... Uh, nursery, going to the kindergarten, going to the first grade, second grade, they are not safe. Terrible things are, unimaginable things are happening. The Bible says, in the last two days, perilous time will come. It's already coming. It's already here. Men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, form of godliness, but they're denying the power of Almighty God. These are the true situations that are happening all around the world. Church, these are the days we must uh, come back to the Word. I know we read so many times. You probably heard hundreds of messages similar to this. But these are the time we need to pay a little more attention and say, Lord, I look around, I see these things are happening. So it's true. It's true it is happening in Christian circles, in Pentecostals and edgy churches. It happened. Matthew chapter 24, verse number 37 says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. We must know where we are going. If we are believers, we should have a goal. We should be looking for a place where Jesus already prepared. I believe it's the preparation period is over. Maybe the final touch is... Uh, doing it. I don't know. I believe one of these days the eastern sky will be split open. We will hear the trumpet. We will hear it. Church, we must hear it. We must be ready. But before we can be sure, we must know where we are going. I had a story recently. I believe this is a true story. True story. Dr. Albert Einstein, we heard about him. He'd been traveling in a train in India many, many, many years ago. As he was sitting there, uh, there are so many people in the same compartment, they've been asking questions. Dr. Einstein being uh, so blessed to have a, that train journey with all the people. And everybody is so nice to him because he's a very respected person. So all of a sudden, the, the TTR, and states you probably don't know what TTR, a person who checked the ticket, in India especially. Some people, they love to travel in a train without ticket. So the officer come by and make sure everybody has the ticket. So as he come, everybody picked, took the tickets, showed to him. And uh, he marked the tickets. And as soon as he walked in, Dr. Einstein frantically searching for his ticket. He couldn't find it. He got up. He put his hand in his pants pocket, couldn't find it. He got very nervous. And when this officer found that, he said, Dr. Einstein, don't worry, don't worry. I know who you are. Don't worry, I don't even want to see your ticket. Sir, please sit down, please sit down. He is not listening. He's still looking. So this man, he finished uh, checking the ticket and he's gone. As he was about to enter the next, uh, next compartment, 
He looked back and he saw Dr. Einstein. He saw his knees. He is he saw the knees are looking under the seat. Naturally, you can imagine it's not a clean place. And train in India, those days may be very dirty. But this great man is looking. The TTR is gone, but he's still looking. So this man came back and said, just uh, snapped the shoulder and said, Sir, didn't I tell you I don't want to see your ticket? I don't want to see your ticket. Please, sir, don't bother to look. Get up, sit in your seat. Dr. Einstein, he looked at him and said, Sir, I know you know who I am, and I know who you are also. But the reason I'm looking for my ticket is, I don't know where I'm going. Until I find my ticket, I don't know which station I should get off. So he's looking for the ticket to find out where he is going. It may be a little funny, but I heard it's a true story. My friends, this great man, a scientist, Dr. Albert Einstein, he doesn't know where he's going. But friends, if you and I, we know where we are going. Amen. Amen. If we know where we are going, it doesn't matter what the situation. It may be sickness. It may be doctor gave you a bad report. It may be somebody said a bad words about you. You may be a heartbroken person. You may be thinking, I don't, nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Even in my family, nobody, nobody care about me. I am not loved by anybody. You may be a person like that. I found some people like that recently. But I have a word for you. If you know where you are going, my friends, you can rejoice. That's why the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. One of this day, he is coming. To take us Amen. where he is sitting, we will be sitting with him. Amen. Amen. I know it's an English service, so I wish uh, re, uh, sing a, a, a chorus with this. If I know where I'm going, is there anything wrong when I get up in the morning with my wife? Uh, sing a song like this. <laughs> I know some of you are getting upset. <laughs> you probably don't like to hear that song. Yes. We sing. We sing. We, like we enjoy singing that. Yes. If you know for sure where you are going, why can't you uh, sing before you go to bed? Why? Is anything wrong? Yes. My brother, my sister, beloved, this morning, the greatest thing we can take it from this service is make sure we know where we are going. Amen. Make sure one of these days our master will come Amen. and take us to be with him. Heaven is a precious place. I'm skipping. My, my time is really limited. So let me skip uh, the next point is heaven is a precious place. Do you know that? Heaven is a beautiful place. My son, my son in law was saying, my daughter was saying, impressing me to move to, to Houston from Detroit. We've been living in Detroit for a while uh, back in uh, New York and uh, so she was trying her best to take me around to walk around and say daddy look at it how beautiful this place well it may be beautiful but let me tell you heaven is much beautiful than Sugarland heaven is much beautiful than Houston heaven is a precious place you know why heaven is a precious place more than anything when I get to heaven, when you get to heaven, the very first person you want to see, I want to see, is not my dad, it's not my mom. Of course, I want to see them. I believe I will see them. But the first person I want to see is my beloved Redeemer, Amen. my master, Amen. the one who paid it all. Amen. He said it is finished. I want to see his face. He is fairer than 10,000. He's the lily of the valley. He is the beauty. He is the most handsome. Yes. I want to say. Amen. So when heaven is a precious place, because Hallelujah. my Jesus is there. Hallelujah. Number two, heaven is a precious place. Our relationships are there. <clears throat> like I said, my parents, they are gone. I believe I will see them again. There are many pastors whom I dearly love. <clears throat> one pastor's wife in Detroit, early last night, one o'clock in the morning, 
She is passed into eternity. Some of you may know if you know Dr. Rajan George, Pastor Rajan George, one of our AG pastors. His wife been sick for a few years now. He, she is promoted to the glory last night. So many of your loved ones, your pastors, our loved ones, they are there. We will see them. Don't you think heaven is most precious? Most precious. Our rewards will be there. Our resources will be there. Our citizenship is in heaven. I know some of us, maybe all of us, we are so proud to say, I'm an American citizen. Last four years, many pastors asked me that question. Oh, Pastor A. Thomas, uh, how long have you been in, uh, in, Amer in America? How long have you been there? I hesitated to say that. I said, well, yeah. Uh, when I said, well, they said, oh, well, I was with my, my, my son, my daughter, for 22 years. They are so proud to say, I'm an American, I'm a citizen. 22 years. My friends, it's okay. It's all right. But I have this much better. Our, our citizenship is in heaven. More than the citizen, your citizen. We can be proud that we are the citizens of heaven. Heaven, our citizenship will be there. Finally, our reservation should be made sure. Make sure. I have a true story I heard. I have four more minutes to say this. You probably heard this. This is a true story. You can verify this from Google. There was a famous singer. Her name was Ruth Anna Metzger. Metzger. Ruth Anna Metzger. Her husband name is Roy Metzger. Ruth Anna was a very famous singer. One day she got an invitation to sing in a wedding. A most wealthiest person in Seattle, Washington. The wedding will take place in the top two floors of Seattle, Columbia Tower. <coughs> and she was so thrilled to receive uh, the invitation. She said, yes, I'm come. They both decided to go. And of course, with that invitation, there was a small little card, you're probably familiar with that, called RSVP. Ruthan is very famous, so she goes all over the world to sing. So she said, well, I'll take care of that later. But she accepted the invitation to sing in that wealthiest man's uh, daughter's wedding. They went, she sang, it was the most stunning, it was the most beautiful decorated wedding. She was so happy she could have had an opportunity to sing in that wedding. After the uh, wedding is, is over now, go to the second floor for reception. Unbelievable, beautifully decorated. The husband and wife, the newly wedded couples walked in and then the invited guests followed them. So there was a person in the door with a beautifully decorated um, gold-bounded book. Each person had to mention their name. So two, three people were ahead of Rutan. And when uh, Rutan and Royce Metzger turn came in, that person asked, may I know your name, please? She said, I am Rutan. This was my husband, Roy Metzger. He looked at the book, M. Sorry, I couldn't find your name. Can you spell it, please? She spelled M-E-T-Z-G-A-R, Metzger. Then the guy looked at it twice and said, sorry, ma'am, your name is not here. I can't let you know. No, 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 you made a mistake. I just sang in the wedding. I'm an invited guest. I'm a famous singer. This is my husband, Roy. The, guy, the person said, sorry, it doesn't work that way. If your name is not in this book, I cannot let you know. She motioned to the nearby security. The person said, would you please guide this person to the service elevator. They walked next to the elevator. He pressed it. G, garage. The elevator came, they went down to the parking garage. They both got into their expensive car. 
and Roy is driving. For several minutes, they are not talking. Nobody is talking. After a while, Roy is still driving. He put his hand on uh, his wife's hands and said, Honey, what happened? Tears on her face and said, Roy, I made a mistake. I didn't send her RSVP. I thought I'm a very famous person. Not, not only that, I'm singing, I'm, I'm singing in that wedding. So it doesn't matter. I just neglected. They were Christians. This is the story says. Roy stopped the vehicle and said, Ruth, this is a lesson for us. Let us make sure we won't miss when we get to heaven. Let us make sure we have the reservation. Church, this morning we may be believers. We may be ministers of the gospel. Are you sure we have the reservation? We may be very, very happy people. We are in the church every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. But one of these days when the trumpet sounds, are we sure we have the reservation? If we have the reservation, don't you worry about what happened to Ruth Ann. Don't you worry about what happened to Roy. Our name will be there. When the trumpet sound, when the Lord call comes, my name will be there. Your name will be there. We will see our master. He will say, well done, A. Thomas. Well done. You have been faithful in little things. Enter into the glory. May the Lord bless us. Oh, he